It's taken nearly seven years, but the final parts of Shovel Knight's Kickstarter stretch goals are finally here, in the form of Shovel Knight Showdown, a seemingly grander version of the four-player battle mode that was originally promised, alongside including all the bosses as playable characters. But since part of the fun is discovering everybody who's playable, I'll try to stick to discussing only the characters we've seen for the most recent PAX demo to avoid spoilers. So Shovel Knight Showdown is a four-player platforming fighting game, similar to Smash Brothers, but with an 8-bit aesthetic and even simpler controls. And like Smash Brothers, there are a few different rule sets to choose from. Showdown mode features the standard stock or time affair, whereas Treasure Clash awards the victory to whomever collects the most gems that randomly appear around the stage, which I found to be a refreshing break from the more traditional options, as my tactics had to change to focus on the objective and staying alive, and carefully deciding when to attack and steal the gems other players drop upon death. Treasure Clash becomes tense when a potential winner only needs one more gem, and in particular when the clash is further along in story mode. Admittedly, I did get frustrated at times being squeezed out by the CPU, and may have said a thing or two to the screen, but that just shows how invested I was in the experience. No matter how you play, there are a ton of options available in both modes to mix things up. But if you can't decide, then Chester's Choice might be for you, which randomly selects one out of 20 or so of Yacht Club's favorite combinations, including Team, Item, Cheat, Mode, and Stage. It keeps things snappy and creates a fantastic environment for parties, such as one that cranks up the knockback using a cheat mode for especially zany matches. And speaking of parties, kudos to the fun Mario Party-like results screen with rising and lowering podiums that kept me guessing who the winner was until the very end. The controls are kept simple, with most attacks being performed with just a button tap, though some are a two-step affair such as digging the ground and popping out, while others require you to hold the button for a moment or two. And although there might not be any grabs, there is a parry that adds the Yomi aspect against opponents. It doesn't require as precise timing as some other games, but was enough that I felt some satisfaction whenever I pulled it off. So there's enough complexity to ensure you can't just button mash your way to victory, especially since each character has a unique moveset, and some differences in speed, size, and jump. The core gameplay is easy to pick up and play, and I felt right at home moving around a showdown coming from playing the previous Shovel Knight campaigns. Deciding whether to go and attack an opponent knowing they're likely to parry, being in a prime spot to wait for them to come, or deciding if I can be the first to an item, even if it meant covering some treacherous terrain, those were all decisions I faced constantly that kept gameplay fresh combined with various level layouts. Of course, a fighting game relies on its cast of characters, and Showdown has around 20 to choose from that you'll unlock throughout the game. Shovel, Plague, Spectre, and King Knight's movement have been translated over from their campaigns, along with one or two of their special moves. Each character had me thinking about its movements in different ways, as it became apparent that even the ones that appear slow on the surface had other ways of quickly getting around like Mole Knight, who can slide across the screen in an attack, or burrow in the ground to dart around. Even for some characters that I wasn't a fan of, like the Enchantress, had some redeeming pros after digging in deeper. It was a treat discovering how each Shovel Knight boss played, and uncovering where each of their strengths and weaknesses lay. Tinker Knight, for instance, can throw a wrench horizontally while moving slowly on foot, but lobs wrenches vertically on the quicker mobile gear wheel, and the fact that he has a move called Definitely Intentional Trip to fall on his face before a wrench rain is hilarious. As a result of these character differences, I found there was always something unique in planning movement around each level, and it was fun figuring out the best strategy for each one. Even unlocking characters in stages is enjoyable, offering the same sense of excitement and achievement as Smash Brothers. Yacht Club included a menu item for unlockables to see what feat or amount of time is required to earn them, albeit with some text hidden to not spoil everything. If you're looking for something a little deeper, there's a story mode too with story elements between some of the matches, and you can play this cooperatively with a friend. While most of the matches are essentially a series of Chester's Choice featuring different settings, there are a few unique battles you'll find only here, such as some 8-player matches. Each character has a rival or someone to work with, and the dialogue that happens between them helps build their characters further without resorting to the typical fighting game story filler. The story mode for me was the best way to play the game when solo, as there's a good balance of treasure clashes and showdowns, and is perfect to hop in for quick session. The CPU AI seemed fair, and I was particularly impressed that the final boss or CPU enemies could be challenging while not being cheap. I can see myself revisiting story mode in the future to beat it with all the characters on higher difficulty settings. Plus, there's a super fun target stage featuring Percy about halfway through the story that I could end up playing by itself for hours trying to make hay on a high score. As Shovel Knight is rooted in platforming, it's probably not a surprise that the stage design plays a big role in the gameplay. And with over 20 of them inspired by actual Shovel Knight levels, there's a decent amount of variety here. Some scroll while others feature moving platforms, whereas others feature dangerous hazards like lava pits. Dying instantly upon touching it took some getting used to, but I enjoyed knocking back opponents into lava for a crispy demise. 
In fact, some of my favorite moments involve the lava that floods in along the top and bottom of the stage during sudden death. Such as one instance where a platform suddenly lifted to push us through into lava, awarding victory to my other friend who was new to the game and barely even knew what had happened. Chaotic moments like those are some of my favorites in party fighting games. As we've come to expect from the Shovel Knight series, the game is overall polished with a clean look. The simple crisp pixel art style helped make it easy to keep track of my character, which can be a problem in flashier games like Smash Bros. I only have a few small things to nitpick. Respawning CPU opponents have a long lag time between when they respawn and actually start moving, which is a little annoying when they're on my own team. Also, while invulnerable, there's a repeating error-like sound effect when trying to pick up an item. Felt a bit off, but guess I can't have the best of both worlds trying to pick up items while immune to attacks. Finally, this wasn't a problem for me, but Shovel Knight Showdown is local multiplayer only, with no option to play online, which may be a bummer to some of you. Ready for the lowdown on Showdown? Shovel Knight Showdown is a fun, tight, and fast-paced experience whenever you're playing with friends or alone. But while its highs may not reach quite the level of chaotic fun, other party fighting games I've played such as Gang Beast, Nidhogg, or Lethal Leap, it does offer an overall deeper experience thanks to a mixed variety of moves across a large roster, and I expect it will last longer for me than those other party fighting games for that reason. Showdown is an excellent 4-player battler with mode options in spades, without being too complex for newcomers to join during a party. I liked it a lot, and see myself continuing to play this for some time, as one of my local multiplayer game go-tos. It's an excellent reason to come back to Shovel Knight while waiting for Dig and whatever is next from Yacht Club Games. Thanks for watching! For more indie coverage on Switch, stay tuned to Game Explain.